guys, my loyal friends, my loyal subscribers, if you're new to the channel, then welcome. If you're returning, then thanks for watching. We have a spe another special, a quarantine special this Monday. Um, we're going to be doing kind of a story time, mixing some photos and some fun clips. The story is going to be our past in history with Puerto Escondido. It's been a place that's been really close to our family. We've been traveling there since we were very young. It's been a place of many firsts, the birthplace of the mullet, the first barrel, my first backside barrel, my first barrel on a board uh, that's considered a gun, um, our first pet boa constrictor, our first pet possum, all kinds of wild things. We're going to go over it all. We're going to have some pictures from back in the day that my mom took. Um, enjoy the episode and let's dive right in. So. I think our first time down there was back in 2002 and our mom, we didn't have much money but she would save up by renting rooms in the place we rented over the winter and in the summer we'd travel and try and rent the house that we rented here in Hawaii out. Um, while we were gone the whole time we would try to travel a place that was usually cheaper and less expensive to stay at for long periods of time. We spent time in Bali, in France and down in Mexico. Um, we did three months in Puerto Escondido, uh, our first time going there, and we had just all gotten to the age where we could kind of surf and travel um, fairly well. And our mom took us down there and we rented a, a little hotel right on the beach, right on Zicatoa Strip. And that's where our adventure started in Mexico. Um, we met a guy named Coco Nogales, who at the time was the, and still is, one of the top surfers that came out of Puerto Escondido. We met the local boys and they were just incredibly inviting and took care of us, anything we needed, anything uh, that we had needed help with and of course showing us the way in the water and surfing. The local boys down there were charging massive Porto already at that time. They were towing it, they were pushing the limits and they were just really, really good people. They uh, accepted us as if we were family and the times we spent with those guys we will not forget. Um, we're going to show you a couple photos of our time down in Porto. Checking out some old uh, castle things, Aztec things. We got Ivan riding a horse. We got all kinds of horse stuff, but we're going to go over some of the highlights of that trip. The first being, there's this wave down the beach from the main beach break at Porto, and that wave is called the Point. Um, or La Punta, I think, and there's this rock on that point break, and my mom used to longboard it, and she had, at one point, had tried to shoot between the rock and the continuation of the wave, got hit by backwash, launched onto her back on the rocks, had several huge cuts. Now, keep in mind, we're down in Mexico, like, it's pretty sketchy, and she had multiple huge lacerations down her back, stitches and everything um, and she was laid up for almost a, an entire month of the three month trip we're down there and Coco and his buddy Roger at the time completely took care of us and while my mom was healing she literally couldn't get up she was in the bed for that entire time and during that period we had countless adventures one being we had a pet baby boa constrictor a snake that we had found somewhere along the way I'm going to show you guys the photo right now um, I don't know if it had lost its mom or what, but it ended up staying with us for three days. It would sleep with us because of the warmth, I think. And there's Ivan with our pet baby boa constrictor. And we were just, it was like Hawaii for us. We were just on the beach all day long, loving it, getting sunburnt, sunscreened up. We had our pet snake. That was one of our many adventures. Um, at the time, as you can see, oh, it's not in that photo. I'll look for it. Ivan, who was a wild man and always has been, tripped going up some stairs at a local um, little restaurant and he landed his teeth on the stairs, carved all his gums up and took off part of his lip. We were like, oh my god, what do we do? Like kind of tripping. He was the youngest of us and he had most of his gums flapped up. We take him to the hospital, <laughs> the doctor grabs his gum and cuts it off with scissors. And he, had, he still to this day has a permanent like one tooth, you can see more of it because 
the piece had just gotten cut off and then we he put some disinfectant on it and i've been uh being as young as he was he healed right up but i don't know if you can see the gum part i'll look for that photo in this photo you can see his lip is cut up and that leads to our next little fun story our pet possums we found two baby possums along the way and we took them in for another three days or a week before my mom decided that they could have rabies or something and we had to let them go but for about a week they were our little best buds um, and during that entire time and this is a story for another time before the trip John had thrown a rock he, I don't think he meant to do what he did but he had thrown it from 50 feet away I was swimming in the water I had seen the rock coming, I had jumped to get out of the way of it and jumped into its line. It hit my front teeth, all my front teeth gone. So they were gone prematurely and for three years I had no front teeth. So you can see in some of these photos, I have no teeth at all in the front and I didn't for about three years time. I began to think that they were never going to grow in. And that was good times. So on to the surfing. Porto is a really special place because uh, it was a lot similar to Hawaii for us. The waves were extremely powerful, uh, extremely risky, and we were kind of used to playing in the shore break over there. So automatically we got out in the water and Coco showed us the way and took us in. Here's John um, at small Porto doing his thing. And here, somehow... I have a photo of my very first backside barrel. This is it, folks. Now, it looks like a peeler. It was a closeout. It did end up closing out, and I believe that's the reason why I was forced to be in the barrel. But this is the start of my young barrel career that has continued on to this day. And now, we get shots like those at the pipeline. This turn to this. <laughs> Zord, these are some of Zord's photos. This is a photo hanging out with young Coco Nogales. You can look him up on Instagram. He's an absolute legend. And he's done a lot for the sport down there in the community. Moving on, let's talk about the birthplace of the mullet. The hair that I rocked for 2018-2019 seasons, um, sending it as hard as possible. This all started on a trip down there for a swell strike in uh, the 2018 season, I think. We went to a local barber shop, and I showed the lady a photo of a mullet, and I said, I need this, and she styled me out. She didn't speak English, and I couldn't speak Spanish, but all we needed was one photo and she gave me the best mullet I've ever had and that was the first one I've ever had. And those clips we got from that trip are insane. Um, let's see, what else? Bef after the, our three months trip, we had ended up going to back to Porto as much as we could. Um, not every year, but every couple of years we would try and make it back to the to Zigatel and spend some time there and see our old friends and um, the surf community down there. And to this day, the locals down there are absolutely charging. The bodyboarders, the surfers, they're sending it. The young kids coming up are getting are getting better and better. They're all on guns. They're out there when it's 15 to 20 feet. They're pulling into barrels. Um, and they're, it's, it's just rad to see because that wave is heavy. Porto is no walk in the park. Um, one of the heaviest waves I've ever surfed. You have so much going on out there. You have rip currents that are constantly, you're trying to... Uh, dodge and avoid and get a clean track for a clean wave and most of the time you have full three to four hour sessions where if you got one wave you're psyched and it, one wave can make an entire trip worth it it's one of those spots but you can also have trips where you don't catch any at all it's that hard of a wave and it is so so violent on the beat downs talk about Hold downs, you can get slammed on sand, that's rock hard, break things. Um, you get caught in one of those rushing currents out and a set, and you're caught in between the both of them. Hammer in an anvil, it's not a good place to be. When I was about 16 or 17 years old, me and Code often went down there, and we were out one evening, 
it was huge and I had he had gotten away before me and he had kicked out into the rip current I had gotten the way behind him and I had fallen and gotten worked and I swear I couldn't I had a paddle vest on I couldn't make it to the surface I could not get to the surface it was it was that strong and I just remember there was so much foam I had my hand above the water scraping trying to find something some sort of purchase I couldn't swim because there was so much foam I couldn't propel my body upward and Koa said he was five feet away trying to get to me because he thought I was drowning and he said he could just see my hand flopping on the surface and there's a bomb coming there's another wave coming and I was the closest I've been to a two-wave hold down what I ended up having to do was reverse my direction even though I'm dying for air reverse into the water because the foam level was so high and then power back up got my head above the surface got a breath just before the next white water hit us and Koa said he was like oh I thought you were done because I had to dive under uh, for the next wave and I didn't see you pop up and I saw people that luckily the next wave washed us super far in we got out of the danger zone and we both went in um, extremely humbled and grateful to be alive and and just stoked that we had survived another session in our young big wave careers and around that same time I think it was the trip before that we were on a van's trip Ivan and I got one of the most legendary um, two wave sets of our lives we were out in the afternoon it was we were dodging rip currents and I remember Shane Beshin I mean not Shane Beshin um, Gavin Beshin was out the back he was there on a trip he had hadn't traveled there with us he was just there on his own trip and we were like Gavin's a legend like he he knows the way out here and we were just following him following his lead avoiding the currents and this absolute beauty of a set came it was me John Ivan and Gavin Gavin was a little too far out. Ivan went on the first one and got, at the time, the biggest, best backside barrel of his life on a gun, his first big barrel on a gun. I went on the next one and got what was, at the time, my best and biggest backside barrel. My first, I mean, frontside barrel. My first barrel on a board. Uh, I think it was a 10-4, and it wasn't a very good board. But because the board was so slow, I think it made me get the deepest, uh, as deep as possible on the wave. And I think it must have been, uh, again, 15 or 16 at the time, Ivan being 13 or 14. So we were absolute groms. All that being said, um, we'll show you the current footage of our last trip to Porto. And I cannot wait to get back there. I hope you guys have enjoyed the story time. A fun little glimpse into our past um, to one of the places we've been traveling to since we were as young as possible. Shout out to mom for taking us on those legendary trips and learning, having us learn so much. Um, we didn't do too much learning in school, but we learned on the road as much as we could about life and travel and uh, dealing with things along the way. So we're thankful for that. Shout out to mom and enjoy the rest of the surf.
What do you think? I think. Let us know if we should sell some prints. These are some Zord's incredible work. Use discount code ZORK and purchase yourself a print. Signing off. Subscribe. Thanks for watching.